Hi, I'm Some Tech Guy, and thanks for dropping by. If you have a failed fan that has even noisy or isn't spinning on your EVGA card, it's easy to replace it, and I'm going to show you how to do this job in less than 10 minutes. After we're done, I will also give you three important tips for when buying your fans so you don't run into any problems. First, you will need a 1.5mm hex bit so we can remove the eight screws from the fan shroud. There are four on the front and there are two on each edge. Next, remove the shroud. It grips the mounts, so you may need to push it down against the heat sink to work it free. It's easier to do this from one end and then work towards the other. Right now fold it up and back and out of the way and note that it will be attached to the PCB via a cable at the top which powers the small RGB EVGA logo on top of the card. Now swap to a crosshead to remove the fans. Use a magnetic screwdriver so you don't drop the screws. I use an iFixit Mako Precision Kit which is beautifully made, nice to use and has all the bits I need and it's linked in the comments below. Now remove the fans that you want to replace. Unlike some cards, you can swap all fans independently in the EVGA card. You can get these fans from sites like eBay, and I'll give you some tips what you need to do to get it right at the end. The wires are held in place in a cable guide, and you just need to unthread them down to the header sockets where they plug into the PCB. The fan furthest from the display port can be a bit tricky, as it's rooted through a hole in the heatsink, and it's hard to get a good grip on it. Push the tab on the header plug and then give it a pull from the top to pull it directly up and out from the heatsink. You can see here that it's a little fiddly, but take your time and just don't use excessive force. If you are removing the other fans as well, Getting them disconnected first and out of the way can be a help. When you push the tab on the plugs, you should feel them click out. Just make sure they're disengaged before you pull on the cable or they won't come free. Now we can install the replacement fans. If you're only replacing one, then there's less to do here. As you put each fan in place, you can push the header plugs back into the sockets. They are keyed with a clip on the outside and they make a gentle click when they're seated properly. Route the cables back in the guides. If you don't get these in properly, then the fan shroud may not sit flush and you won't be able to screw it in. If when you're trying to screw the shroud in later, you can't get it to line up with the holes, then this may be what you need to fix. Before I install the final fan, here is the back of the fan with the model number that you'll need to pick up. The back of the fan label also provides the details of the fan, and this one is rated at 12 volts DC at 0.55 amps. This is the fan you will need and despite the different cable lengths and plug colours, all the fans actually have the same model number. Now let's screw the new fans into the heatsink, not over tightening as we go. I would suggest you screw the first screw in as the one by the cable connector and you can use this to align the other holes before you tighten the other three screws in. Then go back and tighten that last screw. Repeat this for the three fans.
Now let's replace the shroud and give the fans a gentle spin to make sure they're not fouling on any of the cables or on the shroud itself and that they spin freely. And then let's swap back to the 1.5mm hex head and screw the 8 screws back into the fan shroud. And while we do that, here are my 3 tips for getting the correct fans. Firstly, check the model number that I showed you in the video, it's a great starting point for searching for your replacement fans. Second, measure your fan dimensions and check the depth and the screw hole distances so you order the correct fans. XC3 and the Fiddlewind 3 edition fans look similar but they do have differences. And lastly, measure and check the cable lengths. Some of the aftermarket fans could have the wrong length cables and this could be a showstopper if they're too short. And of course, thank you for watching and I hope this video helps you get your EVGA car back to its full health. And here you can find some links to other videos and to subscribe for further tech content. See you in the next.